your stories, our community. This is Local 5 News with Tom Tulaski, Aaron Davison, and Chief Meteorologist Luke Zanthi. I've been pulling a lot of strength from my family and friends. There's been so much support from the city of Appleton, Nina, um, and, and this, it's really, really helped me a lot. Now on Local 5, the family of three-year-old Zayana Corbin speaks out about her tragic death. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Erin Davison. And I'm Tom Zalaski. We begin with a story you will only see here on Local 5. The Appleton Police Department and the community went pink today for a three-year-old girl who was killed last month. Local 5 talked with the father of that young girl. Rhonda Fox brings us the story. Ziana was, um, as a daughter, um, a wonderful daughter. She was always happy, playful, always wanted to get to know other people that she didn't even know and just bring happiness to everybody. Ziana Corbin was killed after she and her mother were attacked with an edge weapon. Ziana's father says he's devastated but is finding strength from family and the Fox City's community. I'm hanging in there. Um, I'm pulling a lot of strength from my family and friends. There's been so much support from the city of Appleton, Nina, um, and, and this, it's really, really helped me a lot. Um, this, this whole town has just been very, very kind to, to the whole family, and I really am appreciative of it. Police asked the community to wear pink, which was Diana's favorite color, to support her family and friends. The community likes to have something positive to focus on, and giving them you know, an opportunity to wear pink to show support for Zayana and her family and really come together as a community, I think is an important thing. I think that that's great that um, although this was an unfortunate situation for my daughter, it's bringing people together and bringing awareness to uh, domestic violence and things of that nature. I think that that is really, really good. Um, and although the situation was tragic, we can learn a lot from it and move forward, and I think that that's really good. In addition to Pink, Zayana's father said she loved Dora the Explorer and reading. Reporting in the Fox Cities Bureau, Rhonda Fox, Local 5 News. Thanks, Rhonda. A GoFundMe account has been set up to help pay for Zayana Corbin's funeral expenses. Visit our website, wearegreenbay.com, for a link to that page. As for the man who is charged with allegedly killing Zayana, 25-year-old Demetrius Williams, he'll be appearing in Outagamie County Court tomorrow morning for his preliminary hearing. In Wisconsin news tonight, yet another case of coronavirus was confirmed in Wisconsin today. This makes it the third confirmed case in the state. The latest case comes from a person in Dane County who traveled by plane to an area of the country experiencing community spread. This third case comes less than 24 hours after a second person in Pierce County in northwest Wisconsin was confirmed to have contracted the virus, also through community spread in an existing hot zone. Pierce and Dane counties are now doing contact tracing to determine who those patients have had contact with and determine if they too should be tested and isolated in order to contain the illness and prevent it from spreading further. The two people recently identified are currently recovering from the virus at home. Another Dane County resident has since recovered. 43 other tests have come back negative for the illness. Now, a doctor from Bell & Health came to Local 5 Studios during our 6 o'clock show this evening to talk about this deadly virus. Dr. Paul Casey says that when dealing with the coronavirus, it can hit people of any age, but the elderly are more susceptible. It tends to affect older people with other medical problems such as diabetes, heart disease, dialysis, and especially people who are immune compromised. Children luckily seem to be spared, but it hits older people with other medical problems very hard. And news on the disease from the Fox Valley. Fox Valley Transit is also taking measures to prevent this spread of the deadly virus. The service says all the guidelines put in place by the CDC, like washing your hands and covering your mouth when coughing and sneezing, are all in place when you're riding a bus. And they ask those passengers to help keep the buses germ-free. Extra efforts are also being taken to sanitize the buses on a nightly basis.
We are uh, wiping down the, the areas inside the buses that are touched on a regular basis, uh, like the stanchions or the, the handles that the passengers hold on to, the seats, those types of things. I would recommend everybody just pay attention to the CDC and what their recommendations are, and I think we'll all be fine to get through this. And Valley Transit is also working to make hand sanitizer available to all its passengers. As this virus continues to spread, it is impacting how schools are handling day-to-day -day operations. UW Milwaukee will be extending their spring break after an employee of UWM Foundation was tested for the virus yesterday. The employee became ill after coming in contact with someone who had been to a country with a level three travel warning. The test results will not be known until the end of the week. Spring break will be extended two weeks and will run from March 15th to the 29th. UWM is also preparing to move the majority of its case classes for all three campuses online following the extended spring break. As for here in northeast Wisconsin, UW Green Bay, they haven't taken quite as drastic a measure as that, but the university did send out a note to students today that if they do have any kind of sickness, they should not come to class. Professors got an email saying they have to prepare home lessons and assignments for anyone who does stay home. News now from your local election headquarters. The two candidates on the spring election ballot for Menasha Mayor squared off in a debate forum at a public library this evening. The incumbent Don Mercus and challenger Rebecca Nichols both got the chance to answer questions and tell the community how they would help them grow if elected. I think we want to really emphasize the fact that we're moving in a great direction. We're doing a lot of things that we promised to do over the past four years, and I want to keep moving that vision forward. I'm running to build a Menasha that works for everyone by working with our residents, our, our business community, and organizations, because I believe strongly that we get more done when we're working together. And a reminder, Election Day takes place April 7th. As for the election, polls are now closed in four of the six states holding Democratic contests today. More than 300 delegates are at stake. It's a winning night for former Vice President Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders was looking for a repeat victory in Michigan, but voters there went for Biden. CBS's Skylar Henry has more from Washington. CBS News projects Joe Biden the winner of the Democratic primary in Michigan. That's the night's top delegate prize in a state where Bernie Sanders was hoping to repeat his 2016 victory. Electability is a top issue for Democratic voters. I voted for Biden because I think that he's more equipped to, to lead the country, and I think he has more chance of beating the current gentleman in office. CBS News projects Biden is also the winner in Missouri and Mississippi, where he got a huge boost from African American voters and also won a majority of white voters. I think Biden's electable. Uh, he's a gentleman. That impresses me. Polling sites kept cleaning staff and supplies on hand throughout the day, but concerns about coronavirus prompted both Biden and Sanders to cancel their planned rallies in Cleveland, Ohio. The Sanders campaign posted signs expressing his regret for canceling, but he had an upbeat message about his campaign throughout the day. When our record is compared to Biden's, when our vision is compared to Biden's, when we have that debate in Phoenix, I'm feeling pretty good. There will not be a live audience for Sunday's Democratic debate in Phoenix due to concerns about coronavirus. And some lawmakers are suggesting the outbreak could affect how campaigns reach voters going forward. There's a lot of handshaking. There's a lot of large gatherings. We're going to have to look harder at things like teletown halls, at broadcast events rather than in-person events. CBS News exit polls show a majority of Democratic primary voters say Biden is the best candidate to handle a major crisis over Sanders. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. And Biden's campaign canceled an event in Tampa on Thursday. The former vice president will deliver remarks on the coronavirus in his home state. Of Delaware. World War II women Air Force service pilots, also known as the WASP, they were a big part of this country's history. Still ahead, EAA is honoring these pilots who were the first women to fly military aircraft with a special exhibit. And from sun to snow tonight, how much we're expecting and when the snow exits for tomorrow morning, then we'll have to look ahead to a round of soaking rainfall for Thursday forecast.
You're watching Local 5 News with Tom Tulaski and Aaron Davison.